Okay, good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's 5.01. The session starts at 5. Thank you for joining us tonight. I just wanted to let you know that this session will be recorded and the recording will be on the district YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and give the introduction, introduce our speakers, and then we'll start. Uh, my name is Fatmi Faraj. I am one of three executive directors of student achievement in the district. Uh, the district is proud to offer students a wide assortment of high school options to let them create a path that is right for them. Parents and students in middle school and high school will learn more today uh, during today's session about options that they can take after you listen to this session and select what's most appropriate for you and for your child. As your child prepares for the high school, whether he or she wants to prepare for a career right out of high school, earn an associate degree at no cost to the family, or take challenging academic courses and uh, earn accept acceptance at a top tier university, all of those are possible with Dearborn Public Schools. During the session today, you will get an overview of the different options students have access to in ninth grade as they leave middle school. And then you can ask questions to learn more from our presenters. The presentation will also be recorded and available later, as I mentioned, on the district YouTube channel. Uh, it's dearbornschools.org if you look it up. In addition uh, to this meeting, there will be one more session on December 14th. Uh, for those who were not able to attend today. And again, you can listen to the recording when you need to. Ms. Kodama is with us today. Thank you, Ms. Kodama. She will give you uh, the same introduction in Arabic and she will translate as we go along uh, during the presentation. I also added a link to the presentation translated by Ms. Kodama in Arabic. Today's presenters will be Ms. Kerry Bazzi. She's one of the counselors at the Handy Ford Early College. And Ms. Kim Shaver, she's uh, at the DTMST. Uh, they will go through the details of the Henry Ford Early College and the DTMST programs and the criteria to be selected for these programs if students apply. They will also answer questions that you may have. And again, anything that you hear or would like to inquire about in Arabic, Ms. Kodama is here to support you with that. DCMST stands for Dearborn Center for Math, Math Science and Technology. And uh, Henry Ford Early College stands for Henry Ford Early College, HFE. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna give it away to Ms. Shaver, right? Uh, Carrie's gonna go first. Carrie, do you, do you want, can you start the slideshow yourself or? Uh, actually, she's having technical difficulties, so she would like it uh, presented on the screen. And they both combined, right, Ms. Shaver? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Farage, I'm sorry for the interruptions. I assume that none of the parents need an interpret interpretation right now. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and give the introduction in Arabic, please. Okay. So, مساء الخير معكم السيدة فاطمة فرج مديرة تنفيذية لإنجازات الطلاب في مدارس زيربون الرسمية الاجتماع اليوم لتعريف الأهالي والطلاب على الخيارات خيارات المدرسة الثانوية الموجودة في مدارس زيربون الرسمية التي يستطيع الطلاب اختيارها والانتساب إليها إذا تم تأهلهم وقابلوا المتطلبات للانضمام لهذه البرنامج في الصف التاسع يوجد معنا في هذا في هذا هذه الجلسة الصغيرة أيضا عدد من المستشارين والأخصائيين الذين سيتكلمون عن الخيارات الموجودة في كلية هنري فورد المبكرة وأيضا عن برنامجنا في مركز ديربون للعلوم والتكنولوجيا إذا رغبتم في الترجمة الرجاء إخبارنا عبر صندوق الدردشة والمناقشة كي نستمر في تقديم الترجمة إذا لم يكن هناك في حاجة للترجمة سأبقى موجودة معكم في حال وجود أي سؤال في أي الاحتياجات الرجاء 
الإشارة إلى ذلك للحفاظ على الوقت هذه المحاضرة هي أول محاضرة أولى وسنقوم بالاجتماع مرة أخرى للأهالي الذين لم تتسنى لهم الفرصة للانضمام إلينا للانضمام طرح الأسئلة الموجودة لديهم وأيضا هذه الجلسة مسجلة وسوف يتم وضعها على الموقع الإلكتروني لمدار الزيروان الرسمية لمشاهدة مرة أخرى ومتابعتها وليتمكن أيضا الأشخاص الذين لم يحضروا من حضورها السيدة كيري بازي من مدرسة من جامعة هنري فورد المبكرة وسيدة كيم من مركز زيروان للعلوم والتكنولوجيا سيقودون البرنامج حاليا والعرض التقديمي و إذا كان لديكم أي أسئلة الرجاء أم عدم أم الخجل والتوجه إلينا بجميع هذه الأسئلة وشكرا Okay, so Carrie, are you there? Hi, Kim. I am. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Hi. Are we ready to start or should yeah. I? Yeah. Do you have a ability to uh, change the slides? So I'm sorry, I'm having um, technical difficulty. So I do not. So it's, if you don't mind when I say next slide, would you mind change, just going to the next one? Not at all. Thank you so much, Kim. Okay, good, good evening, everyone. Parents, I'm sure there are some students out there. Uh, my name is Carrie Bazzi. I'm one of the counselors for the early college programs. Um, I'm going to be presenting to you tonight on secondary options that are available to um, different public school students and um, students in Wayne County. So um, as I mentioned, I am one of the counselors for the early college programs. We have three early college programs, one that focuses on health careers, I'm sorry, on careers in the health industry, the health career school, Henry Ford Early College, that's our first and oldest school. Next, we have the Advanced Manufacturing and Technology School, which focuses on careers in technology, manufacturing, engineering. And then we have the Pre-Education School, which focuses on um, careers in teaching. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we are looking for students that are interested in these career areas because we have um, many programs that allow students to obtain their high school diploma, um, a potential associate degree, up to 60 plus transferable college credits and or a certification in various career areas. And a great benefit to these programs is that it is all paid for by the district, including books, everything's paid for. So it's a great opportunity. So if um, you have a student or you are a student listening, and you're interested in um, careers in these areas, um, listen up, because I have a lot of information to share with you. Um, okay, please, next slide. Thank you. So our three schools, the three early college programs are located on the Henry Ford College campus. Um, we can, so we're on a college campus. So the way that works is we have several different buildings and um, students just kind of go from building to from building to building to, ascent, to attend both their high school and college classes throughout the day. Um, an early college program is a five year program. Whoa. I'm sorry, I thought it was on my end. Okay, I don't know what just happened. It's okay, we'll wait. Um, somebody just... Someone else is uh, start sharing their um, their screen. Ms. Ahlam? Okay, here, let me get back. Okay. Okay, thank you. So um, our programs are all five-year high school programs where... Um, so that's one of the biggest differences between our, our program and a typical high school. So um, right now in a typical eighth grade student, their year of graduation would be June of 2027. So if a student were to end, um, apply and um, attend one of our programs, their year of graduation would change to uh, 2028. So students or parents that are listening, 
might be wondering why would I want my student, my son or daughter to attend school for five years, high school for five years instead of four. So within those five years, one of the benefits is that they earn their high school diploma, which is four years. And then an addition, and then within that fifth year, they also complete two years worth of college classes. So that's essentially six years worth of schooling finished within five, five years. So they finish six years worth of school in five years. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So many of our students um, could, could potentially earn an associate degree. They could get a certification in one of many various um, career areas. Many of our students are looking and wanting to get transferable college credits that they take with them to a university and continue on to a bachelor's degree. Another benefit of our program is that because students do not get their high school diploma until that fifth year, when they're applying to colleges, colleges look, look at them as a first time college student or incoming freshman. And what this means is that this makes them, um, this makes them um, eligible for the freshman level scholarships which are the best scholarships that um, students can get. So it's the kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, typically, if a student were, were to go to a regular high school, um, which are all great schools in our district, Fortin, Etzel Ford, Dearborn High, and um, say they graduate after that fourth year, and then they were, attend, they would, were to attend Henry Ford College, and then after a couple of years at Henry Ford College, they decide to go to U of M Dearborn or Michigan State or any university. Colleges would look at them as a transfer student. And there are um, transfer scholarships uh, available. They're just not as good and not as large of an amount. So by um, students being looked at as first time freshmen, even though they have all of these college credits that they're taking with them, it makes them eligible for the better scholarships. Um, we do offer transportation for students in the Dearborn Schools area, and the way that works is students would get on their normal neighbor neighborhood bus, and it would bus them to uh, the closest high school near their home, which would be their home, home high school had they not, um, if they didn't attend early college, and a bus from their high school would bring them to Henry Ford, or to Henry Ford College where they would attend their high school classes. And at the end of the day, that just kind of works in reverse. And they would get on a bus from the early college. It would take them back to their home high school, Dearborn High, Etzel Ford, or Fortson, where they would make it back in time to join any clubs, sports, activities that are offered at their home high school. So um, we do not offer extracurricular activities at our school, but students would be able to join sports, clubs, do activities at their um, regular homes, home high school that um, are after school. I'm sorry, excuse my voice. I'm like um, trying my best and have a little bit of a cold. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, um, one of the most important things to know about is our application process. So our application will be available in early February. Uh, so or very early February, the application will be up and available. And the way that works is um, for Dearborn Public School students, it will be emailed directly to their Dearborn Schools email. And the application is just a Google form. It's pretty simple. Um, they'll have to come fill it out with their personal information, contact information, parent information, you know, just general information like that. The report cards and the letters, the letters of recommendation will be taken care of by counselors and core teachers. Students will be required to submit a student writing sample. Um, students that live outside of the Dearborn Schools area, the application will be um, posted on our website. And it's the, it's a very same process, but just um, not emailed directly to students, but it will be available to students that live in Wayne County on our website, same time, uh, early February. The deadline to apply is March 1st. So um, as long as you apply by March 1st, we will consider your application. 
Um, once your application is submitted, sometime in the spring, we will bring you to our campus um, at Henry Ford College, where we will have students take um, a reading comprehension test. Sorry, I'm like, my phone's glitching. So we'll ask students to come to our campus and ask them to take um, a reading comprehension test because we want we are looking for students who are reading close to grade level because we are um, getting college classes, which is very academically challenging. So as long as they're close to grade level and have solid grades in their core classes, meaning A's, B's, and C's, um, I encourage students to apply and um, submit an application. So if a student is struggling in their core classes, getting D's and E's, um, I just want to just to be honest, an early college program that leads to taking college classes early might not be the best fit for, for your student. So um, they will be required to take a reading comprehension test. Unfortunately, we have um, way more applicants than spots available. So um, for all three of our early college programs, we do conduct a lottery. So progress. Can you guys, can you hear me, Kim? Yep. Okay, so that happens three. we do have way more applicants than spots available. And um, we, for, we take about 50 to 55 students per school. So three, 50 to 55 students for the health career school, um, same for the advanced manufacturing school and the pre-education school. About half of those seats we reserve for Dearborn Public School students. And then we open the other um, half to surrounding communities in Wayne County, like um, Redford, Livonia, Canton, et cetera. Just make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, um, next slide, please. So this is just what a typical schedule would look like for students that attend our school. Um, it's a very typical high school schedule, but if you notice for the health school, um, and it, so we have all of the core classes, but there is a fifth core class. There's an extra science class um, for the health career school because we are, um, getting students ready to enter careers in the health area, which are heavy in science. And we wanna make sure that they're ready for the rigorous um, college cl science classes that they will be taking. For not, um, ninth and 10th grade for the manufacturing and education school, again, a typical high school schedule, all of their core classes. The only extracurricular, um, I'm sorry, the only elective class that students will be taking with us is um, gym. And that will be uh, during ninth grade for both schools, for all three schools. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So in 10th grade, again, it's a very typical high school schedule for all three programs. Again, um, for the health career school, there is two science classes. And this is where things change a little bit. This is um, when students in 10th grade, so during sophomore year, they start to take their college classes. And the way that works is we have um, college professors from Henry Ford College come over to our campus and teach the college classes in-house. So at this point, students are not out on the regular college campus with the general um, college you know, population. We keep them contained and the college classes are taught in-house. So they're only attending with fellow um, early college students. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So in 11th grade, um, students will only have two, possibly three high school classes. So they will be finished with their high school core classes at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. So for the rest of the day, um, students in 11th grade will be attending their college classes on campus. And at this point, they're on the um, regular college campus with regu the regular um, college population. So they're attending classes with 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 50 year olds. So um, they are mixed in with the regular college um, population. So students do have to be mature, responsible, and you know, able to hand that 
handle that freedom and that um, flexibility that they have. Um, we, I do meet with students, myself and my colleague, Mr. Gothro. So in 11th grade, we do meet with students individually to discuss their career interests and what areas they want to pursue. And we help them plan their college classes around their career interests and goals. But um, the way the college schedules work, it's a little bit different than the high school schedule. They do not have class every day. Um, they get to choose the sections and the day, that, that means the days and the times that classes are taken. So they do have a lot more freedom and flexibility. They might only have um, a college class that meets on a Tuesday and Thursday for an hour and a half, or they might have an online class, or they might sign up for a Saturday class, depending on the college schedule and when classes are offered. So they will have a lot of freedom and a lot of responsibility uh, during that 11th grade year. That's when things change and um, you know they're on the regular college campus. During 12th and 13th year, we call that 13th year, the fifth year, we call it the 13th year. Students are full-time college students. They're, they have, they're finished with their high school classes. We honestly don't see them very much unless they come to you know, meet with me or another counselor or teacher for um, you know, support or to talk. So they're on the regular college campus attending their college students as a full-time college student. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so on the screen, these are some uh, programs that we offer in the health school that lead to jobs immediately. So most of these are two-year associate degree programs that will lead to um, high-paying jobs, making a very good living. One of the most um, rigorous and high-demand um, programs is nursing. So we have students that go into the nursing program. And by the time they finish that fifth year, they're 19 years old and they're getting, you know, they have a job as an RN working as a nurse, getting paid, you know, making a very good living and making, um, getting a job with a great um, wait, living wage. Um, like I said, uh, most of these are two-year associate degrees that lead directly to a job. Respiratory therapist has become, you know, a very high um, need area after um, COVID very well paid. For students that are looking to, you know, for a little bit more than the two-year associate degree and they want to become a doctor or a physical therapist or a physician's assistant, we do have programs where we could, um, they would go more the pre-professional route and they would take prerequisite classes to take those classes that will, you know, go towards a bachelor's degree and beyond and get the transferable credits that they need to, um, meet those career um, interests and areas. Okay, next, please, next slide. So um, these are some of the careers in the manufacturing, for in the advanced manufacturing school. And very similarly, a lot of these programs with just an associate degree lead to great, you know, to great careers, um, high need, high demand, high skills areas. Um, Computer-aided design is in the manufacturing industry. We have HVAC, that's heating and cooling, which is very high need, high demand, especially living in Michigan. We have, you know, air con we need air conditioning in the summer and heating and cooling, heating in the winter. So it's going to be very um, high need and, high, you know, high paid, um, high demand areas. So uh, for students that are looking, again, for more of the pre-professional route, they want to become an architect or an engineer, we also have the pre-professional route where they could complete the prerequisite classes and transfer 60, 60 plus credits towards a bachelor de degree to be well on, the, on their way to um, apply up to, to, I'm sorry, to apply towards those um, areas. I'm sorry, I'm like having, I'm trying hard to see my screen. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So finally, we have the pre-education school and we're looking for students who are interested in becoming teachers in the areas of elementary education, secondary education, special education. Um, one of the benefits of this program is by the time they finish that fifth year, they leave us with a paraprofessional 
certificate, which will allow them to work either part-time or full-time in a school while they're um, completing their classes at, towards a bachelor's degree so they could get that hands-on experience while they're attending college to complete their bachelor's degree. So they do leave with a certification that allows them to work as a paraprofessional. Okay, next slide, please. So we do, um, we do offer hands-on field experiences for our students from the very beginning. So we want our students to have hands-on experience where they get to have front and center opportunities to connect with people in various industries. And the goal is kind of to find out what careers they are interested in, what careers they wanna pursue by you know, shadowing people in the, in the industry that they're um, working in. So students in our health career schools, ninth and 10th grade students, every Wednesday get on a bus from our school and they um, go down to Henry Ford Hospital where they get to job shadow nurses, pharmacy technicians, surgical technologists, respiratory therapists, in order to see what these people do day in and day out. And like I said, just kind of figure out where their interest lies so that when they are ready to start scheduling their college classes and during junior year and beyond, we can help them schedule the classes that will help them meet their career goals. Uh, next slide. So for the manufacturing school, say, uh, kind of the same thing, students do rotations in ninth and 10th grade on campus where they get to try different machines, tools, get to know different job areas to figure out where their interests lie. Again, to have those meaningful conversations when they are when we are scheduling every semester, we meet, uh, Mr. Gothro, he's the other counselor, we meet with students individually, one-on-one. -on -one. We don't go into classrooms and mass schedule students. We meet with students every single semester, one-on-one, -on -one, and we have those conversations, again, to schedule their classes around their career interests and goals. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, for the pre-education school, about twice a month, we have students um, visit elementary schools in their neighborhood area where they get to work with small groups of students, doing tutoring, um, seeing what a teacher does day in and day out, having that meaningful field experience and um, seeing what a teacher does day in and day out to see if it matches with their career interests. They get to see what it means to be a teacher, what it means to be a professional, what it means to be on time, work with small groups of students. Um, again, to have those, um, those experiences to see where their careers, where their interests lie. Okay, sorry, my screen went blank. Okay. Next uh, slide, please. Okay, so as I mentioned before, unfortunately, we, we have way more applicants than we have spots available. So if for whatever reason, your student, uh, you know, a student applies to one of our schools and does not get in, another option that we offer is the Collegiate Academy. And it's very similar to the early college programs. It does add a fifth year to the high school experience. So Again, it's a five-year commitment. It's a five-year program. And um, students earn, can earn 60 or 60 plus transferable college credits, an associate degree, and or, and or a certification in various career areas. Um, this is a hybrid program. So students would remain a part of their home high school, Dearborn High, Etzel Ford, or Fordson. Um, and it begins in 11th grade. And the way students are eligible to enter the Collegiate Academy is they take a test during their sophomore year. So during 10th grade year, they take a test, um, the PSAT test. And as long as they meet the benchmark scores in reading and math, they will um, get an invitation to be a part of the Collegiate Academy. And the nice thing about the Collegiate Academy, it's another option, of course. The nice thing about the Collegiate Academy is that there are no seat limitations. So any student that does meet the benchmark scores will be invited to attend the Collegiate Academy. Uh, so that's a nice thing. There are no seat limitations and students are still a part of their um, home high school. They get to walk with their class. So 
Um, for the early college programs, the early college is their home high school, just to be clear. So for the three early college programs, the health career school, the advanced manufacturing school, and the pre-education school, that is, if students apply to any one of those schools and they are admitted that is their school for all, all five years they would not attend the regular high schools they would be with us for those five years graduate with us we would have a commencement ceremony for their cohort um, but the collegiate academy is a little bit different it begins in 11th grade they're still a part of their home high school and it's just another option for you to consider thank you for your time um, next slide please this is my um, contact information it's on here, you could feel free to email me. I will stick around till the end of the presentation and answer any questions. Again, I apologize. I was having um, technical difficulties today, so I had to call in, but we made it work and I will stick around for questions at the end. And I will turn it over to Ms. Shaver now to present on um, DCMST. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kim Shaver. I'm the lead teacher for DCMST, the Dearborn Center for Math, Science, and Technology. So if you're not familiar with DCMST, we're a specialized secondary four-year advanced research-based science and math and technology school. So our, our mission is to educate the future leaders in the areas of engineering, computer science, um, healthcare, mathematics, and technology. So students who join our program have already made the decision that they are university bound after high school. And they're interested in pursuing some type of STEM career, such as engineer, doctor, pharmacist, uh, researcher, mathematician, computer scientist, things of that nature. So before we get into too many of the details of um, DCMST, I want to first give you some information about the group of kids who finished our program last year, just to highlight their accomplishments. So these are, ki these are kids who stayed all four years and graduated last June from Dearborn Public Schools. So we had 59 students, and as you can see, they come from all three high schools. On average, those 59 kids had an average GPA of 4.08, an SAT score of 1340. On average, they earned eight AP, AP credit for eight AP classes. So when you take an AP class, that is like taking a college class. And on average, they took four college classes. Most of them take their classes at Henry Ford College, but some also take college classes at U of M Dearborn. So most kids on average earn about 12, uh, they, they finish 12 college classes during their time at DCMST. And the other thing I wanna point out is the scholarship information at the bottom. Those 59 students were offered over $5 million in scholarships. Those 59 students accepted $1.7 million in scholarships. And these are not scholarships that we give out. These are scholarships they earned for all because of all their academic achievement. Now, where are those students now? So where, where are those 59 kids? So just a quick summary. Those 59, of those 59 kids, 19 of them are at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor on campus right now. 16 are at U of M Dearborn, and many of them intend to transfer. Out of those 59 kids, we have one at Harvard, one at Stanford, one at UPenn, which is an Ivy League school, one at uh, Michigan Tech, which is another excellent school, along with Wayne State. But I do want to point out the note at the bottom. You can be a DCMST student and also a Collegiate Academy student. So out of those 59 kids, seven of those students were a part of the Collegiate Academy and they are finishing up their, their, their year after high school right now. <clears throat> kids who finish our program, um, 
are successful academically and earn many merits. We have many students who are national merit scholars, salutatorian valedictorians at their home school, earn, earn awards from the college board for all their AP accomplishments. And uh, for the first time last year, there's a picture up here in the corner of me and my student uh, from Edsel Ford who won the Amazon Future Engineer Award, which is a $40,000 cash award and a guaranteed paid Amazon um, internship every year after, after their years studying in college. So after each year of college, they get a paid summer internship at Amazon. And that was the first time one of our students won that prestigious award. So who is a potential candidate for DCMST? Well, First of all, you have to be currently enrolled in Algebra 1. Our students, as freshmen, they take, they start in an integrated math class that starts with Algebra 2 concepts. So if you want to apply to DCMST, you have to be in Algebra 1 right now. When we're selecting students, <clears throat> we look at the score on the Semester 1 Algebra final exam, and we're looking for students who earned a 78% or higher. We look at standardized test scores. From the seventh grade, we look at MSTEP and we look at any eighth grade standardized testing that is taken in the first semester. In addition, we look at grades in language arts, math and science from the second semester of the seventh grade and the first semester of the eighth grade. And we're looking for kids whose uh, school, whose grades are B minus or higher. It doesn't mean if a student, you know, earned a grade lower than a B minus that they can't apply, but we're looking for candidates that meet all of these criteria. <clears throat> Our students, we're looking for students that are very determined to become a professional in the in medicine, in engineering, in research. Those are the kind of students that we're looking for. So students that are very determined, who possess, who possess that, you know, what they say, call it grit, that nothing's going to stand in their way for them to achieve their goals. We're also looking for students who are interested in STEM ideas? Do they really like science? Do they come home talking about what they learned in science that day or what they learned in math? Do they, on the weekends, are they teaching themselves how to code? Those are the kind of kids we're looking for. We're also looking for kids who, are, who, who can accept academic challenges that, and that they're okay with it. Um, for example, if a, if, a, if a student asks a teacher a question at DCMST, we may not provide the answer directly. Instead, what we might do is ask them some questions back to help them arrive at the answer on their own. So, and that's part of being willing to be challenged. So I'm gonna talk for a minute about our application process, and then I'll get in a little more into the details of our program. We plan on opening our applications on January 11th. I believe that's the Wednesday after one from when we get break, back from our next break. The students will be able to go to and go to our website and click on the DPS applicant information. So in there, there'll be a Google form that they fill out. The deadline to apply will be February 28th. And again, our selection is based on math common assessment score, standardized test scores, and the GPA for those three classes, math, science, and language arts. If we have more qualified students that apply than spots, right now we have 90 spots, three classes of 30, then we too will do a lottery. <clears throat> so we are a half day program. Ninth and 10th graders attend in the afternoon. In the morning, they'll go to their home high school where they'll take hours one, two, and three, which are typically English, foreign language, social studies, maybe health or gym. They'll eat lunch at their home school. And then the Dearborn Public Schools 
will provide transportation from their home school to DCMST for their three classes in the afternoon, hours four, five, and six. Our classes are a few minutes shorter to allow for that transportation. They'll take their, if they're at least at freshman year, they'll take their science, math, and computer science course, and then the bus will take them back to their home school. <clears throat> and they actually end up arriving back at their home school before the end of the regular school day. So if they're involved in sports or the marching band or student council or any kind of clubs, they'll, they'll be back in plenty of time. In fact, they'll be back usually before the regular school day ends. So in terms of our curriculum, I, I just want to take a few minutes to outline what the students take. The first two years for in the ninth and 10th grade, <clears throat> ninth grade, they'll take honors integrated math two, which is algebra, honors algebra two in the beginning of honors geometry. They'll take honors chemistry both semesters, and then they'll take an introductory computer science course called AP Computer Science Principles. Their 10th grade year, they'll take Honors Integrated Math 3, which is what remains of Honors Geometry and the, that about 60 or 70% of pre-calc, mostly true concepts. They'll take AP Biology and AP Seminar. So they'll take one AP class in the ninth grade, Advanced Placement, and two AP classes in the 10th grade. When they reach 11th grade, they'll take AP Physics. And for math, this is where some of our students will go over to the college and start taking calculus because they are very accelerated in mathematics by the time they are a junior. They'll also get their first elective choice. We offer many, uh, many elective classes, including AP Research, AP Computer Science, A, AP Statistics, but we also, students can go on to, to Henry Ford College, and I'm popping open a document right now. We have a, we have a list of approved uh, courses from Henry Ford College and the University of Michigan Dearborn that students can take that will count for STEM credit at DCMST. <clears throat> I just want to reiterate that we are we are a four year program. We are not a five year program. So students who come to DCMST, oh, no! they'll come ninth and tenth grade in the afternoon. In the eleventh and twelfth grade, they'll come in the morning unless they have classes at the college, and then they'll take those classes there. Um, I'm showing here a link to our website. Again, my name is Kim Shaver, and that's my email on the screen. Our director is Ms. Amal Al Kadre, and our assistant principal is Osama Beydoun. If you feel more comfortable contacting them with your questions, I have their emails up here on the screen as well. <clears throat> so that's the end of my DCMST presentation. Although on behalf of the Michael Berry Career Center, I was asked to also talk about the fact that in the 10th grade, if DCMST and early college is not for your child, but they may, and if they're interested in um, some of our other programs at the Career Center, in the 10th grade, they could consider joining the Michael Berry Career Center. So we have all kinds of different pro programs, certification type programs, such as uh, mechanic, um, in culinary, which is if you, their student is interested in becoming a chef or a dental hygienist. And um, I have all, we are also providing the link to their website here and a contact. But this is not for eighth grade students. This would be um, if your child didn't, isn't participating in the early college or DCMST and is looking for another option. So I'm just going to back this up. And at this time, um, my presentation is is done. And um, Fatmi, I'm not sure if you're still on the line. Yeah, we we are open for questions. Is Antkun any questions? Hello, Fina, Joe, about questions. Okay. 
Can, can you please mute yourself if you're not supposed to be speaking? I, I keep hearing, uh, I think it's a child or a student who keeps speaking. I'll mute them. Yeah. They're, they muted them. So. No, I'm there. Okay, ask your question if you have a question. When does this program start? The programs start um, at the north. Do you mean start what time of year or in the morning? In the because morning. DCMST, DCMST follows uh, a schedule very similar to the homeschools. You, If you go to DCMST, or like in the morning, if you come as an, in the ninth grader, your first three classes are at your homeschool. So you would follow the homeschool schedule. And then after lunch, you bring a bus over to DCMST. Our times are slightly different. Okay, okay, madam, uh, Thank uh, you. Thank you. Yeah, like like Ms. Chavez said, the, it, they have a schedule similar to the high school. Um, who, Ms. Chavez, do you know who was speaking? Which student? I do not. Um, it's really tough for me to, there's a lot of people in the meeting and a lot of people are signed in as iPhone and now we can see somebody's drawing on the screen. So yeah, I can see I, that. I don't really know who's doing that. So unfortunate. Um, we can stop presenting then. Uh, any more questions? May yes. I ask a question? Please do. Um, my question yeah, is um, for the early college program. Um, if yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Um, it's the iPhone one, so maybe you can mute him. Yeah, I'm trying to find the iPhone one. It's uh, no! let me tell you. I got it. Thank you. Maybe, maybe we can remove them, maybe. I'm gonna remove, yeah. No! Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Nada. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, my question was if somebody wants to, if somebody starts the early college program and you know it's not they find out down the road it's not a good fit, what happens if they don't continue it? Or is that an option? Okay, I'm sorry, I just unmuted myself. So I'll jump in. So we do have students and parents sign a contract. It is a five-year program. So we do have them sign a contract before they start with us. Because like I said, we have to conduct a lottery because there's so much interest in our program. So we want people that are going to be committed for those five years. And um, obviously, you know, what's best for students. But if they were, if there were extenuating circumstances where a student had to leave, I would just from experience, it's way better early on. But we do not encourage people, you know, students to apply just to try it out because it is very career focused and we want people that are interested in these career areas. Uh, can ninth graders apply for Henry Ford Early College, Gary? Let's say they started ninth grade and they want to apply for 10th grade, can they? So, you know, in the past, we've taken some applications for 10th grade, but very, very rarely do we have spots available. So very rarely do students leave our program. So um, just kind of like piggybacking off the last question about, you know, students wanting to leave the program early. We do, we do not usually have spots available for 10th graders, but in the past, we have let people apply. And if a spot became available, we would um, consider their application but very rarely is there a spot available. Thank you, Kerry. Another question for you. How long will it take for you to reply to the parents if they're accepted or not so they can enroll in their home high school? Okay, so um, like I mentioned earlier, students come in sometime in the spring and do the reading comprehension test, and then we conduct the lottery. And then, um, so in early spring is the reading comprehension test. I want to say by... May, sometime in May, definitely before the end of the school year, students and parents are notified. So then that way, if a student decides not to accept the invitation or the spot, we can offer it to somebody else. And if I could add, um, I had a question yesterday when I did the STEM presentation 
Um, we're on a GCMST is on a similar timeline as the early college. So it does take us a while to go through all the data. And it might be the April, May timeframe before your students are notified. However, in the middle school, they may, they may start scheduling them for high school. So if your child already has a high school schedule before they find out if they're in the early college or DCMST, it's not a problem. That's what the counselors at both programs will do. They'll go, they, it's very easy for them if your child accepts their early college invitation or DCMST for the counselors to give them the right schedule. So just, uh, just don't think that if they have a schedule and then get accepted after they have one that it can't be changed because we it will be changed for them. There's a question in the chat for you, Kim. Um, and I also added the translated presentation in the chat. The link to it in the chat is about to see it. I, so I see the question about um, when they would find out when they are accepted. And then I responded back that uh, we typically notify students in the April, May timeframe. So mm -hmm. there's, there is another question. Can we apply for both? And we have to choose one of them. Um, so, well, yes, you will. If you, we prefer if you don't apply to both, it, you know, there's a lot involved with finding students for both programs. If you get accepted to both programs, then, um, you know, you'll, you will have to decline one of the programs and then, you know, we have to go find somebody for your spot and that's just extra work for us. So we would appreciate if you take the time to talk to your parents, that parents and students work together to decide which program is best for them and apply to that one. Can I just add something for the early college program? So because we have three different um, schools, we're asking that you apply to just one school as well. So either apply only to health careers, advanced manufacturing, or pre-education. Um, if a student doesn't know which school they're most interested in at this moment, I would say just you know have them choose their first choice because on the application, we are going to allow um, you to put down what your second and third choice would be. So choose the best option available for now. Did I add? List your second and third choice on the application. And then if spots become, become available in those schools, we will consider you. So just choose one for now, please. Um, there's another question here. Uh, is transportation available for the Collegiate Academy? Uh, no, their transportation is not available for the Collegiate Academy. So students would have to find their own transportation um, to and from. It's a school of Excuse me, I have a question. Sure. Um, is it possible to send out the presentation for today? So that way we at least have something to reference regarding um, deadlines and open, open dates. Excuse me. I will put it in the chat. And we will also link it uh, on the YouTube channel like we indicated before. I already linked the Arabic version. I will link the English version. And so that you know your eighth graders heard the same presentations, uh, excuse me, at their middle schools. And they asked all the questions as well. I'm going to put the link uh, in the chat. I, I would also Thank like you. to add, I would also like to add, um, I have a list of all the students in the district who are currently enrolled in Algebra 1. And before um, we open our applications, I'm going to send out a mass email to all of those students to remind them uh, when the applications open and how to apply. Um, and there's also another presentation next week. So I believe it's next Wednesday. The same information will be presented and you're more than welcome to attend again. And um, eventually, you know, the presentations will be shared as Ms. Uh, Faraj indicated. Okay, somebody in the chat is asking, is there basketball teams at HFCC and DCMST? So if, you, if your child gets into DCMST and he wants to play basketball, he'll play for his home school. <laughs> Again, the transportation will return your child back to their home school in 
before the end of the regular school day. So if your child's telling you that they'll miss practice if they go to DCMST, that's not true. They'll be back before the end of the regular school day. So if they if they want to do DCMST and play basketball for their home school, they can as long as they make the team. <laughs> And that's the same for the early college programs. Um, students will be able to uh, um, join sports or any clubs or activities that are offered after school at their home high school. So, um, you know, people are asking, you know, in the chat, what if I apply to two programs and I pick one and, and the other and then change my mind? Well, to be honest with you, if you pick one program, then change your mind. Well, your spot may not be available in the other program anymore. Because if you decline an invitation, then we're gonna go to the next up person on the list. And I believe it works similarly for the early college. If I, I don't wanna speak for you, but I believe it's the same idea. Yes, yeah, so like, a, yeah, we do, we do have a list. So we conduct the lottery and then if spots are not accepted, you know, within the time frame or, mm -hmm. you know, Fine. Sometimes then we do just move on down the list yep, as well. Move on down the list. May I ask another question? Of course. Um, so um, you mentioned the lottery as well as the admissions for um, both the early college and the DCS SMT um, MSC program. How does it how does it work differently? Is it the same kind of concept that? You have to be admitted and then there's limited spots and then there's a lottery. Is that how it works for both of them? And then um, also for the second option, how um, you mentioned for early college that there's only like uh, 55 spots um, and that you always get a lot more applications. Is that the same for DCSMT? Well, I'm gonna go first on that. So because, because um, students have to be in algebra one, in the eighth grade, our pool of candidates is, you know, could be different than those who apply to the early college. And we have, we have, we look at the kids who apply, make sure they've taken algebra one, and then we look at our criteria. And if we have over 90 kids that meet all of our criteria, then we'll do the lottery before we send out the invitations. Does that make sense? So the, so the lottery happens before people apply? No. No, no the people have to apply. And then we, and if we look at, we find the candidates who have met our qualifications. And if there's more than 90, then we'll have a lottery. I see. Okay. okay. And typically, do you, typically, you know, do you have double the applicants, triple the applicants? Um, um, last year, we had about double the number of seats but we didn't necessarily have 90 that met all of our qualifications. So then we, what we do is we'll go and look at the data and then we'll say, okay, you, you know, we'll look at the data and then we'll start, you know, removing one of the criteria to get more kids on the list. I our goal is to have a class of 90. That's our goal. So three classes of 30, that's our goal every year. Yes, somebody's asking, is there every sport we want? Yes, every sport, you'll be playing all your sports at your home school for your, for your home high school if you make your team. DCMST and the early college don't have separate teams. You would, you've been assigned a, a, a high school and those are the teams that you would try out for and hopefully play for. All right, it is 6.01. And yes, boys and girls attend both programs. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think we're good. What do you think, Bobby? Sounds like we are done with questions. Thank you so much. And you are welcome. To join next week's session as well if you still have questions. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Kim and Carrie. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank Taking you. Taking time out of your evening to present on these. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night.